you need to show it a PDF file they didn't. So is cold and miserable. The general had ordered all of us to stand before him, to be recognized for our bravery. It's the worst day of my life. We were ordered to rescue the Texans. Mene! Okasa! They were called the Lost Battalion. They were completely surrounded by Germans. Their own regiment couldn't get to them, so they sent us. We suffered over 800 casualties in over a month of non-stop combat. We liberated two towns, rescued 211 Texans, and drove the Germans back. We lost 216 men in this hell. How did I get here? Oh yeah, I volunteered. Wailua Wa. Nisei, they called us. Second generation Japanese. We were Americans born in the territory of Hawaii. My four brothers and I lived with our family, uh, with our parents in the plantation house. Our parents, the Issei, who immigrated from Japan, were not allowed to become U.S. citizens or own land. We were poor, but happy. Heck, we didn't know we were poor because life was good. We played lots of sports and took champs all the time. We were really good. You name it, we did it. Then everything changed. Japan attacked Hawaii, December 7th, 1941. They decimated our fleet, killed over 2,000 soldiers and civilians. The pilots were Japanese, and they looked like me. Some people started looking at us differently with suspicion and hate. Our parents still spoke Japanese all the time, and used to celebrate the Emperor's birthday, though we pleaded with them not to. Abandon your old ways, we beg. We're in America now. This is our home. No, Japan. We were American. We ate hamburgers and played football. But our parents insisted on us going to Japanese school to learn Japanese values, language, and history. December 7th changed everything. Our loyalty was questioned. Our Americanness was challenged. We burned everything that was Japanese. Martial law was enacted. Buddies I had known all my life, played with, studied with, suddenly acted as though I was the enemy. So if they come, who you gonna shoot, them or me? Who you think, stupid? Me just as good American as you. That really hurt. It was humiliating. It was worse on the mainland, though. They put all the Japanese on the west coast into concentration camps. We had two weeks to pack up their lives and could only bring what they could carry. Some had only hours. They lost everything they had worked so hard for. Their homes, farms, and businesses. Even family pets had to be abandoned. American citizens had their rights taken away. Just like that. Here in Hawaii, the government didn't know what to do with us. There were over 4,000 AJAs, Americans of Japanese ancestry, already serving in the military. Some of my older brother's buddies were in the army. Hey, where are you guys going? No, no. Tell my mom I'm missing dinner. One day, a group of them all disappeared. Later, we found out they were sent to Wisconsin for training. They became the 100th Battalion, a separate, segregated, all Nisei unit from Hawaii. They call them, they call themselves the One Puka Puka, pigeon for one zero zero, because a zero looks like a hole or puka. I was attending the University of Hawaii when Pearl Harbor was attacked. Everyone in the University ROTC was called into active duty. They handed us rifles from 
World War I and five bullets and sent us to guard different spots around the island. We became a part of the Hawaii Territorial Guard. We were scared, but glad to serve our country, desperate to help defend our home. One month later, officials in DC were horrified to discover that Japs in uniform were guarding Hawaii. They kicked us out. We were declared 4C, or enemy aliens, ineligible for combat. Utterly dejected, we returned to school. Hong Wai Ching, the guy who ran the Atherton YMCA, told us we could prove our loyalty in other ways. You don't need guns to prove your loyalty. Grab a shovel. So we gave up our studies and became the VVV, the Varsity Victory Volunteers. Nearly 200 of us dug trenches and did other manual labor to do our part for almost a year. Meanwhile, on the mainland, the hunters became a real crack unit, as they say. They broke a lot of records training at Camp McCoy. The show of loyalty from the VVV and the exemplary training records set by the hunters paid off. The government changed their minds about letting the AJAs join the army. They asked for volunteers. All over the islands, guys signed up. So many people showed up to apply, there was a shortage of typewriters. We had to take a physical. Some guys cried if they didn't pass. They wanted to search so badly. But who could blame us? After suffering and being under suspicion for over a year, we all jumped at the new chance to do our part to help. On the mainland, 1,208 men volunteered, including those from the camps. But here in Hawaii, almost 10,000 guys signed up for 1,500 slots. The response was so overwhelming that 2,645 guys were selected. Then it was time to leave. How proud we were. 17,000 people came out to see us and say aloha at Iolani Palace. What a sight. I'll never forget it. Meanwhile, on the mainland in the camps, people were fiercely divided about serving a country that incarcerated them and took away their rights. The guys in the camps had no send-off like we did. Many were harassed and had to sneak out under the cover of darkness. Oh, what an adventure. We sure felt smart in our uniforms and proud and certain we would make a name for ourselves. The trip over to the mainland was rough. Lots of guys got seasick. Blah. <laughs> That's why I learned to gamble. And in gambling, we found our motto, go for broke. It means to risk it all, to win big. And that's what we did. We risked everything we had to show our loyalty. We risked our lives. Late at night, I would think about my parents, what, what my parents told me before I left. Dear son, do your best. Try to live. But if you must die, so be it. Above all else, do not bring shame to the family. Carry this omamori to keep you safe, Otoosa. That no matter what, don't make shame. Training was tough, but we did well. We met a lot of the Tongs, mainland born Japanese. We didn't get along. You go stay go, I go stay calm. Bye bye. They talked funny. Also, they couldn't understand us. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. What language are you speaking? Hey, just cause you sound like one howling. No mean you know better than me. Bumbai isn't even a word. Baka! Stupid Buddha. Hey, I give you dirty lickings. How am I supposed to know what you're talking about, crazy Hawaiian? We thought they didn't know how to share. With us, it was one for all and all for one. That's just the way the islands are. We'd go to a bar and put all our money on the table. The Katongs would just pay for themselves. It didn't occur to us that they didn't have parents sending them money from home like we did. Next round's on me! Okole Maluna! Uh, one beer, please. Their parents were locked up in concentration camps and had no income. Because of the differences, we got into fights. 
bad ones. What are we going to do about them? I have an idea. We found ourselves on a bus to an internment camp. What fun, like going out on the pass. When we got there, it was a shock. These people were prisoners. There was barbed wire and towers with guns pointing inwards. I couldn't believe the Katongs had volunteered to fight and die for a country that had treated them like this. It was easy to see why they were not eager to sign up as we were. The families were so nice to us. The lion is were cute too. They saved up two weeks of their own rations to feed us, even stuff that was contraband for them. Some were very angry at being put in these camps and rightfully so. But I noticed the Japanese philosophy, shikatakanai, it can't be helped, at work. They also reminded me of my parents at home who said gaman, to quietly endure hardships with grace. Maybe we were so different after all. It was a quiet ride home. It began to sink in that how we did on the battlefield would reflect on the entire Japanese population, not just home, at, not just at home in Hawaii, but in these awful camps too. We became a real unit after that. From then on, we were all in this together. We became the 442nd. Finally, it was time to ship out. We landed and devastated war-torn Naples, Italy. We were trucked to Chivita Vecchia and met up with the 100th, who by this time had been fighting the Germans for eight months. Hey, one puka puka! Too good, huh? You, you guys, huh? You famous now. Hey, Sumina, good to see you. Yeah, still alive. They had been decimated at Casino. There were decorated heroes by then, suffering so many casualties. They were nicknamed the Purple Heart Battalion for earning so many purple hearts from being wounded in battle. It was so good to catch up with our friends and brothers. Soon enough, it was our turn. I wish I could tell you we kicked Okoe our first day of battle, but it wouldn't be true. We got pinned down, and the bullets whizzed by my helmet. It was so scary. How relieved I was when the sh shelling stopped. Oh, surely this is an enemy. The season 100 came and helped us out. One guy shot a bazooka into the belly of a German Tiger tank. They captured 73 Germans, killed 178, and wounded 20. For this, they earned a presidential unit citation. It's a pretty high honor, like winning the Oscar. You are always willing to close with the enemy, and you have always defeated him. The 34th Division is proud of you. America is proud of you. It got a little easier after that difficult first battle. The 100th was attached to the 442nd as the 1st Battalion, but because they were already so decorated, they were allowed to keep their designation as the 100th Battalion. We became the 100th 442nd Regimental Combat Team. You know, war is scary. Anything can happen. Fall back! And often does. You just never know when it's your time. Haru! And only hope it's not today. It wasn't all hell though. We did other things when not engaged in combat. There was lots of marching, of course. And the army kaukau was so jump, so we improvised. We went fishing. Not our usual method, but it worked. One of our favorite dishes was chicken heka. Lucky for us, our company cooks were resourceful. Mmm, oh no. Hey, that's my helmet. I probably mentioned gambling before, but Hawaii people really like to gamble. And of course, we missed home. So we did what we could to bring Hawaii to wherever we were. Summer ended, and we found ourselves in France, under the orders of a new general, attached to the 36th Division, the Texas Division of the 7th Army. One of the worst was in Bruyere. The fighting was house to house. The Jerrys had occupied that French village for three years at that point. It was October by then, and gee, it was cold. After liberating Bruyere, we were sent to Bifontaine, a town close by. We were in the heavily wooded Vosges Mountains. It was truly hellish. Molten hot tree bursts would rain down knife-like shrapnel on us, 
maiming and killing many of us. It was bitterly cold. We'd wake up in sheets of ice in our foxholes. We would light cigarettes, not to smoke, but to keep our hands from freezing. To make things worse, our winter gear hadn't arrived yet. The fighting was almost constant. After suffering, suffering heavy casualties liberating Bier, Bouillère, and Bifontaine, we were so bad or weary. We were finally supposed to get some well-deserved rest after three weeks of fighting. We could take hot showers and get a good night's sleep. But no. The 1st Battalion of the 141st Regiment had got separated and were now surrounded by Germans facing certain death. They were dubbed the Lost Battalion, and we were running low, and they were running low on food and ammunition. Their division had tried to rescue them, but couldn't make headway. So they woke us up and sent us back to the front line. The fighting was so fierce, it felt as though we'd been sent to a slaughter. We were pinned down, as was usually the case. The Germans had the advantage of position. We were often advancing uphill or across open areas where we were picked off like flies. We were good fighters, but we were human. My bodies were falling all around me. I can't tell you how awful being under fire is, how helpless and angry you feel. Watching your bodies die is probably the most horrible thing in the world. What do you do in a situation like that? I figured I was going to die anyway. Might as well die advancing. One by one we all stood up and charged. Guys kept falling as they were shot, but we didn't stop. We kept charging up that hill. We became a human tsunami. Finally we saw the Texans. We did it. We got to them. Saved them. They weren't quite sure of who we were at that point. Were we friend or foe? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Cigarettes? When it sank in, the place erupted in cheers and joy. Yeehaw! The full 40 second boys! That we was all done and dead! Yay! So yeah, I volunteered for this. Later, we will go back to Italy and we'll break the Gothic line. We silently hiked 3,000 feet up steep Mount Fogarito under cover of darkness. The Allies had been at a stalemate for six months. Our commanders had a plan. They said to give us a week to break the Gothic line. It took us a day. Our field artillery guys, the 522nd, will be detached from us and be sent to Germany. They will liberate Jews from a subcamp of Dachau and see firsthand the horrors of the Holocaust. It's ironic that back home, the Katongs were prisoners themselves in camps that looked like those. No, they were not death camps, but it still boggles the mind. Later, we will go home heroes. We'll march down Pennsylvania Avenue and be honored by President Truman, who will give us our seventh presidential unit citation. You fought not only the enemy, but you fought prejudice and you have won. We will become the most highly decorated unit for its size and time of combat in the history of the United States military. At home, we will be greeted with way and hula dances, be reunited with loved ones we haven't seen in years. On the mainland, though, we still encounter racism and hate despite all we had sacrificed. We don't cut jab here. Some of our Katong brothers in arms couldn't even go home after leaving the camps. They had no home to go back to. They had lost everything in the mass relocation. In fact, some guys couldn't even be buried in peace. Some Howley soldiers we fought with now came to our defense, writing letters in our support. Through the GI Bill, we now had the means to go to college. So many of us did just that. We became businessmen, professionals, and politicians. Before the war, we couldn't get loans from banks, so we started our own. Because of prejudice, some law firms wouldn't hire us, so we, so we started our own. Some of us even became judges. We ran for office and changed Hawaii politics forever. Much, much later, it was determined that due to racism, our courage on the battlefield had been downplayed. Thus, 20, 
Marine Distinguished Service Crosses we earned were upgraded to medals of honor, bringing the total to 21. We had a C-17, a cargo plane, named in our honor, the spirit of go for broke. We were awarded a Congressional Gold Medal, the highest civilian, civilian honor for acts of outstanding service to our country. The medal also recognized the military intelligence service, who are Japanese language interpreters, many originated from our ranks. But we don't know that yet. Now I am miserable. There are so many empty spaces where my buddies should be standing. Are they dead? Wounded? Maybe I don't want to know. It seems impossible, but the general makes things even worse with his ignorance. I thought I told you to assemble all the men. This is all the men. This is what's left of the 442. Several of the men broke down and cried. I am an American, an American of Japanese ancestry. I fought, fought to prove my loyalty to this country, and so many of my brothers died doing the same. But you know something? The very thing we were persecuted for, being Japanese, being who we were, turned out to be our biggest strength. The values we learned from our Issei parents, a loyalty, duty, honor, perseverance, shame, and putting the good of the group first, these values made us strong. Our island roots and these cultural values installed a deep camaraderie within us. It forged the lifelong bonds and regard we have for each other and collectively enabled us to be the living embodiment of President Roosevelt's declaration to honor our formation. Americanism is a matter of the mind and heart. Americanism is not it never was a matter of race or ancestry. I, I am an American. American.